So today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on the different types of sedimentary rocks that are found in your reference table, page 7. We're going to tell her this just about the characteristics that you'd use to figure out the three different types of sedimentary rocks. So let's get started. The first category of rock that we're going to talk about are going to be clastic sedimentary rocks. These are going to be the rocks that are going to be created from the formation of other rock fragments. Those rock fragments are called sediments. In order for these sediments to get glued together, they need to be weathered, which means broken down. They need to be eroded, which means that they need to be moved. They need to be deposited, that means they have to get dropped off. They have to get buried, they have to get compressed, compacted, and then finally cemented or lithified into solid rock. Now these clastic sedimentary rocks are completely organized by particle size. The particle size that's going to get cemented together will indicate the name of that rock. These rocks are polymineralic, meaning that they're loaded with different types of minerals throughout. The first two rocks I have displayed here are conglomerate on the right and breccia on the left. These rocks are made from the biggest fragments, pebbles, cobbles, boulders, mixed in with some sand, silt, and clay. The difference between them is that the conglomerate is made of rounded fragments, while the breccia is made of angled fragments. So a lot of these fragments are going to be really angled and sharpened. The reason for the difference is because the conglomerate fragments have been traveled a further distance, while the breccia fragments only traveled a very short distance before they became lithified into solid rock. The next clastic sedimentary rock is going to be sandstone. Now sandstone, again, is a clastic or fragmental sedimentary rock made strictly of sand fragments. So again, this one is organized just by the sand fragments that are going to be cemented together. It is fairly easy to identify because it, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases with sandstone, it comes in a red color, kind of a red rusty color because the iron in the sandstone reacts with the atmosphere. It's a process called oxidation. But again, this is going to be sand-sized fragments compacted and cemented together to give you sandstone. The next sedimentary rock in the clastic category is siltstone. There's really not a lot to look at with the siltstone other than it's made of silt fragments, and these silt fragments are incredibly small. Again, a clastic or fragmental sedimentary rock. The last clastic sedimentary rock that we have is going to be shale. And shale is made of the smallest fragments. Those are called clay fragments. And a lot of times with shale, shale is very brittle. It's a very, very brittle, very weak rock. It comes in really, really smooth uh, layers, very, very thin sections like what you're looking at here. But in many cases, they may have some fossils of plants and animals okay, throughout. Uh, so it tends to be a, a kind of an easy rock to be able to find fossils in. But again, these are the smallest fragments that are going to be glued together. This is shale, and shale is still a clastic or fragmental sedimentary rock. The next category of sedimentary rock that we have are your crystalline or chemical sedimentary rocks. Unlike the clastic, which are polymineralic, these types of sedimentary rocks are monomineralic, meaning that they're only made up of one mineral. So this in my hand that I'm showing you is rock salt. This is taken from the Dead Sea, and this rock salt is only made of the mineral halite. These rocks that I'm going to show you are either made through the chemical precipitation of water or the chemical evaporation of water. Let me give you just a quick example of what evaporation might look like. So I had a beaker of water that I filled up with salt and I dissolved all the salt into the water. I let the water evaporate out of the beaker and look at not only do I have salt on the bottom of the beaker but I have it all on the sides. The water is completely evaporated, it took about three weeks to evaporate and left over is all the salt that was dissolved into the water. That's what we call a chemical evaporite and that's what a lot of these chemical rocks are going to form from. Okay, this right here is a chemical evaporate. This is rock salt, monomineralic, chemical or crystalline sedimentary rock. The next one that I have is dolostone. And dolostone is a type of chemical sedimentary rock made of dolomite. 
Now, dolomite is a very common mineral in your reference table, and this is a rock that's monomineralic. What's neat about this type of dolostone, it actually has a Herkimer diamond right in the middle of it. So this is a rock that's going to contain the mineral dolomite, and it again is monomineralic. It is either a chemical precipitate or a chemical evaporate, chemical sedimentary rock. The last chemical sedimentary rock that we have is going to be, that I have in my collection here, is chemical limestone. Now limestone I'm going to bring up again in a moment, but chemical limestone is interesting because it is strictly made of the mineral calcite. Now there's really not a lot of visible properties here, but if you've ever seen calcite dissolve with, or react, I should say, with hydrochloric acid. So calcite's going to react with hydrochloric acid. So is the chemical limestone. It's going to react. So the limestone is made of calcite. They're both going to react with hydrochloric acid. The last and final grouping of sedimentary rock that we have is going to be the organic rocks. And the organic rocks are rocks that are made from once living material. So bituminous coal is a type of organic or bioclastic sedimentary rock. It's made strictly of dead plants. Now, it gets a little bit tricky sometimes if you have multiple black rocks like this. In my hand over here on the left, that's obsidian, that's igneous. So just be aware that there is some similarities in terms of look, but this is a, a uh, bioclastic sedimentary rock strictly made of plants. The other type of organic or bioclastic sedimentary rock, again, is limestone. Limestone can come in a variety of, of looks. The, probably the main characteristic here is they're made up of shells, but you can also get ones made up of crushed shells as well. This type of limestone on the left is called coquina. Okay, this one over on the right is just fossil limestone in this case. But again, just like with the previous limestone, because this is made of calcite, you put some hydrochloric acid on it, it's going to react. You end up getting a little bit of a reaction from it. So it's very easy to be able to identify. Now those are going to be the classic examples out of your reference table that you're going to find in terms of actual physical samples. Sedimentary rocks are really unique because there is no other type of rock that's going to contain fossils. So here's just a few fossils that I have in my collection. Some trilobites here. So we have some small, some large. Okay, we have a little fish fossil here, a little minnow fossil. What I like about this one here, okay, on one side it there's, looks like just like a regular rock. You flip it over. Okay, that's either a nautiloid or an ammonoid. So you have some really, really unique uh, features here with sedimentary rocks because they do contain fossils. One of my favorite fossils is this one here. This is a shark tooth. Again, you can clearly see the, the kind of the, the relationship that sedimentary rocks have. They kind of have locked in the past history of what life used to look like on the planet, and that's only found in sedimentary rocks. Igneous rocks would melt them. Metamorphic rocks would crush them. One other very, very important characteristic that sedimentary rocks have are going to be layers. So the idea of layers is really, really, really important. So if you look closely in this rock, you clearly can see the nice horizontal layers within this rock. So when you have rocks that have layers, that's a classic indicator that you're looking at sedimentary rocks. So anything with layers. And when I do my metamorphic video, I'll show you the difference between layers and banding. So that is going to be pretty much it with our characteristics of, of uh, sedimentary rocks. Understanding how to read that reference table is critically important, and please, by all means, watch this again as many times as you need to. Good luck with your studies, and we'll talk to you soon.